to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. That now prepare the ministers. Hallelujah. So every time you talk about ministers, see that on one hand, you are right to talk about the fivefold. But in addition to the fivefold, every believer who truly loves Jesus and every believer who is about revealing Jesus with his life, with his profession, and everything around him comes under that category too. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing I want us to get is our corporate mandate as believers. Now, as individuals, Equa Plateau Church has its theme and its vision, the mandate that it runs with. Is that true? Several ministries, para ministries, um, you know, organizations here would have their visions that define why they exist. I want you to know that as believers, regardless denomination regardless your spiritual affiliation regardless your spiritual experience we have a corporate mandate that binds us and i want to reveal this to you two scriptures john chapter one and we'll read six and seven john chapter one six and seven therein lies the corporate mandate for every believer as far as kingdom come is concerned the bible says there was a man sent from god please say after me i am sent from god this is a very powerful revelation you were you only passed through the womb of your mother but you were sent from god you have to be conscious of that divine identity if you know you are sent from god then you can agree that you can be a gift to the world. Are we together? Sent from God, and then you pass through Plateau State, Taraba State, Lagos, Abuja. This is only the geography where your physical body found expression, but you are a man sent from God. And the Bible says, whose name was John? Why did he come? Verse 7. This is our corporate mandate. May I request that we please read it together if you do not mind. Ready? One to read. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That's it. For as long as God gives you the gift of life, you are alive on earth today. This represents your corporate mandate. That the reason why I have come here is that I have come for a witness to bear witness to the light that through my witness men might believe in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 Jesus was giving his final words before he would leave to heaven and he made a very interesting statement verse 8 he says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and then he says you shall be witnesses very interesting word witnesses he never said you shall be men of god he never said you shall be businessmen he never said you shall be a pharmacist a doctor an engineer he never said you shall be a parent he said you shall be every other thing you call yourself is just the geography of the witness but you are a witness who is a witness a witness is a validator. Many of us here are into legal practice. You do not need a witness in the court of law until there is a contention. 
Is that true? Yes. So the assignment of a witness is to make sure that a statement that was made remains as true. Every time you contend with a statement, the judge will ask you, do you have a witness? The assignment of a witness is to be the validator of a claim. Listen, there are many things that God said in the Bible. There are many things Jesus said about God and himself. And Satan and his cohorts are all about the earth, disproving the integrity of God. And like that righteous judge, he's asking, where are the witnesses? That will show creation that everything I said is true. Are we together now? So more than looking at yourself as a preacher. More than looking at yourself as a doctor, a pharmacist, a professor, a learned colleague, a successful person in the oil and gas industry. From a kingdom perspective, you are a witness. Your assignment. You see... Terrorists understand this concept. So, a terrorist can actually send one of their... You are wrong. As far as he's concerned, I am a terrorist. That means the believer, even though you may have your geography of witness, we're getting there shortly, you must have this, this mindset that I am a witness more than what I do this is my state I am a witness a validator of a claim there is as a preacher there is something you are validating as a career person there is something you are validating claims that Jesus made in scripture are we together now I told us that our corporate mandate let me put it in a structured way so you can write our corporate mandate as believers is that in and through our lives Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified our corporate mandate as believers is that in and through our lives Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. That means no matter what you become and no matter what you do, if kingdom come cannot find expression through your life, through that job, as far as God is concerned, you were only the practitioner of whatever career, but not a witness. I can tell you the reason why darkness continues to loom around our horizon is because there are many preachers, there are many career people, there are many business people, but there are few witnesses. Few witnesses. May God find witnesses in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first dimension of the gospel, the message that saves. Now, the second dimension of the gospel I told us yesterday is the ideology that transforms. This is very powerful. Please write the word ideology down. If you do not mind, please write that word down. Ideology. Ideology comes from the word idea. The word idea comes, it connotes a value system, a mindset, a way of thinking. Now we're discussing kingdom. Your ideology is a sum total of your perspectives, your viewpoints, your mindset. Please do write that your ideologies represent a sum total of your value systems, a sum total of your perspectives, your viewpoint. There are a number of cameramen doing their work while this service is going on. And every one of them is standing at an angle. Say for instance, the gentleman standing at this angle may not be able to capture the people behind him. Is that true? Now if he's asked to 
convey everything that happened in this meeting from his perspective, some people will be lost out of the meeting. But that does not mean they were not there. It was the limitation of his perspective. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful because there is this kingdom you see has a value system. The value system is like a software. It's a value system that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purposes. So there is the dimension of the gospel as the message that saves an individual. But it is the value system that leads to societal transformation. Without the value system of the kingdom, it is impossible for a territory to be changed. You may have individuals who are saved, but the territory will continue to plunge into decadence. Do you know why? Because every territory operates based on value systems. Mindsets, we call them. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern that is derived from various means. Number one, culture. Number two, your past experience. Number three, your level of exposure. Number four, your relationships. Number five, the summation of your experience is good or bad. They, they construct an idea about God, about life, about success, about failure, about Satan. Respectfully speaking, I submit to you. Did you know that if you travel almost anywhere around the world, there are places where Nigerians live and you do not need to know where they, maybe where they do business, restaurants and you can enter a Nigerian restaurant and you don't need to ask if this is Nigerian restaurant. They will replicate Nigeria verbatim. Are we, is, is that true? Yeah. When you go into the U.S. Embassy, if you were blindfolded and you suddenly appeared there you, and they told you you were in America, you would believe. Because there's nothing there. It is not, the building is a reflection of a value system and a mindset. Are we together now? Yes. Until this is the key to territorial transformation. I'm showing you why certain territories remain the way they are. In spite of revivals and preachings and conferences and prayer and fasting. It looks like the territory remains unchanged. It is a reflection of a value system that has become a stronghold over that territory. Is God helping us? The ideology that transforms. That means if I look at a believer in Kano and a believer in Lagos and a believer in London and a believer in US, regardless the the geography there is a way you should speak there is a way you should act that makes me know that you are my brother you are my sister because we have been cultured in a similar way since we come from the same kingdom do you agree with me on that we are unable to change our territories because for many we have not tapped into that dimension of the gospel that is an ideology that transforms we know the message that saves through evangelism but most have not learned the value system that transforms society and let me tell you this it is a big deal that our societies are transformed do you know why because like lot you can be a righteous man but if the name of where you are staying is Sodom and Gomorrah, you will still suffer even though you are a righteous man. Is that true? For instance, respectfully speaking, we see that Africa and even our dear nation has suffered from corruption. My question is, are you corrupt as a person? No, I believe and I hope. Hallelujah. But then every one of us here has had to suffer the consequences of corruption is that true this is what happens when a territory is not transformed i will tell you this it is not buildings that transform territories no it is not the vegetation that transform territories all of those things are report cards 
ideologies transform territories. For as long as we sustain the thinking and the ideology that kept us where we were, there would be no room for improvement regardless how we go around it. Are we to, is that true? Now, let me say this respectfully speaking. From, from a developmental standpoint, if we are to switch nations and over 200 million Nigerians are suddenly moved to the U.S. and everybody in U.S. is moved to Nigeria and we say nobody travels again. You are not going, no coming out like Jericho. No going in and no coming out. After 10 years, let me tell you what will happen. Are you ready to hear what will happen? Or do you know it already? Praise the name of the Lord. Another example. Now, this is respectfully speaking. Let's assume that there's somebody who just cleans in an office. That's his work. And maybe the person receives 20,000 or 30,000 and now he's complaining and he said my boss is not doing anything all he does is to sit down behind a laptop signing some files and he's receiving millions in a room with AC and look how cruel and wicked here is my proposition switch them just switch them that means pick the man and say for the next one month you will be in this office let me attempt to describe for you what both of them will do. Are you ready? Let's start with the CEO who now goes to the gate. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to look for a system to automate the opening and the closing of that gate. He can't be pushing it like that. Now watch closely. Watch what is happening to the gate. His mindset is reflecting on the gate. The second thing that happens is his sense of courtesy and decorum both in terms of dressing and communication, will provide the solution there at the gate. So there may not even be need to come inside that office again. Are we together? The third thing that happens is that he's going to build quality relationships. And soon somebody through relationships will put a canopy there and fix up that place. Let's go to our man in the office. Let's find out. That there's, I'm going somewhere. Please pay attention. Let me tell you the first thing, the man there. Number one, he knows he should not be there. So the first thing he would do is to open the fridge. What is here? What? Look at this. Drinks, assorted drinks, assorted biscuits. And he will now begin to eat and carry a very important document and use it to hold. Because he does not know the value of the information there. That is the document that represents the contract the company is pursuing. He will use it to wrap maybe balls or something there. And now he will eat it. And keep the place will be unkept. That room will start reflecting his mindset. It will be dirty, unkept. Eventually he will be frustrated. And then he will blame it on the building and run out. So the question is. Who was really the CEO? Was it the person or the mindset? Let me give you the last example. Thank you for following. Let's say we have two people stand here. And one person is called a powerful man of God. And another person is called an armed robber. If both of them drop dead, who died? Do you call the dead body a man of God? Do you call the dead body an armed robber? You call them dead bodies. So who was really alive? If it is true that both of them are now dead bodies subject to the same thing, what made one greater than the other? The mindset and the ideology. Hallelujah. Now, if say the armed robber comes to Equa Plateau Church and listens to the gospel being preached and he comes out 
to surrender his life to Christ and now that gentleman becomes mentored five years down the line he's now a powerful man of God same body same voice what changed a naive young man who holds his admission letter into the College of Medicine you call him a medical student fast forward 10 20 years that person is a doctor attending to patients same voice same everything so what was the lecturer educating what qualified him to be called a doctor it wasn't like he became muscular or less muscular necessarily it was the mindset you see dear people of God this right here is where the battlefield of transformation is until you are willing to submit your ideologies to divine vetting so that that which is inconsistent with the character of the kingdom is edited from your life there is no possibility of change it doesn't matter whether it is an anointing service respectfully speaking a communion service prayer and fasting night vigil it will end up being a burdensome ritual until and unless your mindset is malleable enough to be transformed now, let me tell you what transformation is not. Transformation does not necessarily mean being exposed in terms of westernization. Because for many of us, we think transformation means I used to take pure water. And now I take water that, you know, um, not necessarily. There are many, many, many wrong things people have learned in a, in, in a bid to show that they are transformed. Are we together? Secular enlightenment is not necessarily transformation. The reference for the believer's transformation is scripture, not territory. Let me repeat. The reference for the believer's transformation is scripture, not territory. That means learning the culture of another territory that seems to be more superior than another territory is not transformation. No. It is true that when you travel out of this nation, you may meet a society that is a lot more civil. There's decorum, there's law and order. And by staying there and learning their ways, generally, your approach to life will be more orderly. There will be greater sense of dexterity. I agree, but that does not translate to transformation. Transformation for the believer has its reference from Scripture. If the word of God is not the basis for the new ideas that you have, you are only moving from fire to an ocean. You will still die. It's only a matter of time. If you come out of a burning fire and you fall into an ocean, are you free? It's just another kind of oppression. Maybe you will last longer. In fact, you will be surprised that you may die faster. The fire has heat and pain. But ask Jonah. The water will have whales and fishes that can prey on you. But, but are you getting what I'm teaching you now? The ideology that transforms. So you may ask me, what then is the difference between two believers who love Jesus, serve him sincerely, all born again? I will tell you, the difference among many other factors is that one has submitted himself to the ideas of scripture and is willing to be disloyal even to age-long ideas sometimes uh, you know our loyalty respectfully speaking to very old cultural old sociological ideas we feel guilty because it looks like if i have to give this up to pick up the idea of scripture it makes me feel weak so even in the midst of pain we will still hold on even in the midst of failure we will still hold on to wrong negative and destructive ideas the key to transformation is not discussion is the willingness to submit ourselves to scripture based I emphasize scripture based not western based respectfully speaking not european based not american based not asian based it must come from above because it is only he that comes from above that is above all hallelujah this is very powerful 
seated here tonight and following by way of television or the internet are men and women who are asking questions. Why is my life not counting? Why am I not making the kind of definite advancement that I need to make in my life? In spite of the fact that I love Jesus, I have an answer. The answer is found in Ephesians 4 and verse 18. It says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind. Apostle Paul was teaching us and he said the assignment of the God of this world is to blind the minds of people. Hallelujah. Very, very important concept. So we must be willing, therefore, to probe and vet meticulously where we got our mindsets from. My beliefs as a summation of everything that I know. Where did it come from? And can I tell you, we must be willing, no matter how long we've held on to these mindsets, if and when we find out that they are not kingdom compliant and they are not proscriptual, we must sustain the unashamedness to replace these old ideas with that which is consistent with the kingdom. This is the only condition to transform our society. Remember our teaching yesterday? When Adam fell and the Lord came to him in the garden in the cool of the day, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. Next question, who told you? Who told you you cannot prosper? Who told you you must live in anger and bitterness? Who told you you cannot walk by love and the dignity of kingdom integrity and prosper? Who told you that you cannot enjoy longevity? Who told you you cannot enjoy health? Who told you that your life cannot be a testament of God's mercy? Someone told you. It's time to vet that voice. Because Paul said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without significance. This conference is a moment of deep reflection to be able to sit down and say why are things not working in my life why is my life not reflecting the glory of God remember what we said about giving excuses yesterday that every time you transfer blames you also transfer authority if my life is not working I must take responsibility under God and find out what could be wrong could it be my belief is there something I have believed about God or not believed about God that is making Satan to seem to prevail over me? Is there something I do not believe? What is my ideology about life? Respectfully speaking, for some of us, we believe that life is an endless circle of struggle and pain where nothing ever happens well. Now, if you hear teachings that have to communicate the favor of God, you may reject it, not because you are wrong, but that experience was not captured in your background. So when God says, I want to bless you, you may not believe it. Are we learning? Please write this down. The key to kingdom advance, the key, I will define kingdom advance shortly. The key to kingdom advance is evangelism and influence. The key to kingdom advance is evangelism and influence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please look up. Thank you. I have given you a very powerful key. Every time you say, Lord, we desire your kingdom to come or your kingdom to be advanced, advancement of the kingdom will be at the mercy of two keys. Key number one, is evangelism and respectfully speaking we have done marvelously well on the plateau and even across the middle belt and the north 
there are people who have spent their lives and spent their days seeing to it that they move from place to place region to region some of them on account of that commitment have today joined the cloud of witnesses we have done well but i submit to you that there is a dimension of the gospel that we may be missing is called influence let's define influence please what is influence influence is the capacity to have an effect I'll take it slowly so we write is God helping us tonight influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindsets and the convictions of a person and a territory I'll take it again influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindsets and convictions of a person, an individual, and then of a territory. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset of a person, the convictions of a person, and that of a territory. Hmm. Hallelujah. Please give us Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 I want to show you through the life of Jesus the power of influence if it is true that our lives and our territories are a reflection of our mindsets, ideas and convictions then we need to investigate who is the person who is behind the scene manipulating our mindsets because that means that is the person who is defining our civilization do we agree on that? Verse Mark chapter 1. Let's begin our reading from verse 21. The Bible says, And they went into Capernaum. This is Jesus. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue. Jesus now and taught. Next verse. The Bible says they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Uh -huh. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Go ahead, go ahead, media. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice and it came out of him. Uh huh. And they were all amazed, in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. 28. Please read with me if that if you can see. Ready? One, two, read. And immediately, what happened? His fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Now I'll continue the reading myself. Next verse, please. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Be patient, please. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him, this is the result of the influence. They brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. 33. And he came, oh dear. What, what verse is that? Please continue. And all the city, we're reading 33 now. All the city were gathered together at the door. Can we be patient to let them? Okay. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. 
The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place to pray. Verse, And Simon and all they that were with him followed after him. May 47 be your testimony. Are you ready? Please read with me. One to read. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. This is the epitome of influence when all men seek for thee. All men there means all people groups. There is what you can have that only old people will look for you. There is what you can have that only young people will look for you. There is what you can have that only your tribesmen will look for you. There is what you can have that only intellectuals will look for you. But there is what when you possess, all men will seek for you. This is the definition of influence. I will tell you this. There has to be a mechanism that the church will bring to the table that will compel all nations to now begin to come. Chasing sinners one by one is becoming a risk today because of the reality of the time. There has to be an intelligent invention and there is, it is called influence. I define influence as the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty is called influence. That means you are able to exert um, a force upon men causing them to buy into your thinking and your ideology without oppressing them is called influence. Believers, we must trust God for grace that in addition to be people of evangelism, we must obtain grace from God to rise to positions of kingdom influence. If we miss out on the influence part, the program of God is going to suffer. Now, I don't have time to teach this, but I'll just give you four pillars of influence and then we'll jump to the last stop topic and then we're done. Thank you for your patience. I'll give it to you just in summary. Pillars of influence. That means if you want to become a person of kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty, there are four pillars. Number one, the first pillar that controls influence is called growth and transformation. You command influence to the degree to which you contend for growth and transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To sustain superior belief systems. Our world will always gravitate towards people that they perceive to have superior belief systems. Hallelujah. Very important. The second pillar of influence is called value and productivity. Value and productivity. My sincere apologies. I'm just running through it so I can't give us all the scriptures that are there. But let's try. At least let me give us two. Proverbs 18 and 16. Please write under value and productivity. Proverbs 18 and 16. And then Exodus chapter 31 from verse 1 to 5. The second pillar of influence is value and productivity. That means nobody will seek for you until they perceive you to be valuable and to be productive. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Kosh. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko Tobre Kateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.